This week, we are going to be geeking out over technology. Are you ready for this, Elizabeth? Yawning, <laughs> yawning there. <laughs> technology is not my favourite subject. I like what it does, but I don't know anything about it, really. Well, we're going to try and make it a bit sexy, because today we're going to talk about some crucial applications, apps for your phone, for yeah. cruisers. Now, we should emphasise this is specifically for liverboards and cruisers so it relates to navigation mm. that that kind of thing as opposed to well i suppose apps like whatsapp and facebook and netflix which we use for communication and entertainment yeah and the bbc and podcast those are my apps those mm. are my favorite apps I mean, the fact is, is that, you know, we've got technology on our side. We're in the 21st century, so we should be using these apps to our advantage. Which, or should we? Well, that brings us on uh -huh. to a philosophical debate. Hello, I'm Liz. And I'm Jamie. Welcome to Follow the Boat, in which we discuss what it's really like to give it all up to live on a boat. And go travelling around the world. We've been doing it since 2006 and we're still at it. Each week we talk about our latest YouTube video. And about boats, sailing, travel or anything else which floats into our heads. And if you leave a comment we like, we'll give you an answer and a name check. Peace, Peace and, and fair, fair winds. winds. Before we dive into this exciting topic on technology, uh, the philosophical debate we mentioned was this idea that for some people, they, they're trying to get away from technology when they go and live on a boat and start cruising. They don't want the interference of technology. They want the simple life. The simple life. Some people don't even want engines on yachts. I mean, that really is taking it to its extreme. They use paper charts and all that, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I mean, I, I get it as well, mm. you know. Uh, we've met many people who don't like using apps that have say annotations on charts for example they don't want to know where the anchorages are where everyone else is yes because they they're on a sort of self-discovery a sense of discovery themselves so even if they're going to places where you know it's a popular place for cruisers they like the excitement of finding these anchorages and i don't think there's anything wrong with that uh, yes, there are different ways of looking at it. Firstly, I think they're fooling themselves if they think that they're discovering somewhere for new. It's very unlikely you're going to do that. To be obvious, the apps will show you where the other people are. So if you're trying to avoid people, go to the places where the app doesn't show them. Uh, yes, but also, <laughs> as we've found, that there are some locations where it's very difficult to find a decent anchorage. Yeah. And sometimes it's useful to know, well, along this coast, which clearly looks all untenable, someone's marked a point where you could potentially anchor. Yeah. I would say, though, after all this time, I think you're really good at finding potential anchorages just using the charts. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, because, I mean, that's what people always did, wasn't it? And if you're not using apps with marked anchorages, then you have to use your sailing and navigational skills to find somewhere to go in. So I think already I'm being the difficult one here. Yeah, whereas I, I, I kind of understand, I get why people wouldn't want to use that. And I think mm. it's fair enough, you know, if yeah. that's how, if that's their approach to sailing. But anyway, that's one of the <laughs> philo philosophical sides of not using apps. Of course, the other one is security. Yes. Now, we did talk about this on our Discord channel. We put a shout out to all of our Discordians to come up with some app ideas. And we got some great feedback. But probably the biggest debate was <laughs> on security of apps. Now, of course, some of these apps are recording your location, your personal data. Um, it took a sort of a turn talking about banking apps, which is not what we're talking about here. Although we should say, of course, that banking apps for us have revolutionised the convenience of, you know, managing our money. It certainly has. It's just we, any time we want to, we can find out what's in there or rather what's not in there, what's coming in and if we've paid stuff and all that and uh, couldn't live without them, to be honest, out here in the wilds. I mean, quite often, I've been in situations where I've gone into a store, didn't have the cash on me and paid using WISE yes. to the person behind the counter, to their personal banking uh, app. Yeah. And money was exchanged within five minutes. Yeah, I mean, we use WISE, don't we? This is a really good international banking app for anyone who's cruising around the world. Uh, we've used it for paying for marinas, for paying for, for stuff, being delivered to the boat. In fact, we're 
pretty much always use it for paying in marinas because you haven't got to worry about what currencies are and uh, paying swift transfers and all that from your own bank. If you find this topic interesting and would like to continue the conversation, come and join the Follow the Boat Discord community. Look for the link in the description. It's free. For those of you who are a bit reticent about using these apps because of security, Bearpaw on Discord did write, some apps must have location services turned on to work, which means that the developer of the app knows where you are and whenever they are used. So what they do is that they use an old, cheap, water-resistant phone without a SIM card or a Wi-Fi for these apps. Um, but they do point out that there are even apps that require you to be online for them to use their services. I mean, and he says, well, good luck with that on passage. <laughs> I've had that problem, yes. and one app in particular we'll talk about in a moment, uh, I was having all kinds of problems because I hadn't logged into it before going offshore. Yeah, I mean, nowadays, of course, we've got Starlink, which has revolutionised all of this, hasn't it? Mm. But anyway, for those of you who do embrace technology and are looking for some useful apps to assist you while cruising uh, both coastal and offshore, here are our list of top sexy apps. <laughs> trying to sex this up. <laughs> we're trying to make this as sexy as possible. Well, I think our first app that, um, that we're going to talk about, I think, is a sexy app. Mm. And that is No Foreign Land, who bill themselves as a social network for sailors. Now, don't turn off as soon as we say social network, because I have to say this app, for me, gets five out of five stars. Um, and it was set up by uh, Stephen Helena Neal, who are liverboard cruisers themselves and have been for the last 10 years or so. Um, Steve and I used to talk quite a lot, actually, because back in the day, No Foreign Land used to be just a, a browser-based service. Finally, they released their app, and the app has now been live for, for some years. I have to say, it is one of my favourite apps because it is so user-friendly. It is fast to load. And the community side of it, um, there's a great emphasis on community, both in terms of all the annotations that are being added to you know, the world chart, um, but also they've got groups within the app. So you but can you just explain what it is? People may not know what it is. Okay, so it's a mapping app and it allows you to add your own annotations. So those annotations could be anchorages, they could be destinations, ports, harbour control, shops, restaurants, uh, walks, views, anything that you think would be useful for other cruisers. So when someone's coming into a new place and they're thinking about what to do, check out No Foreign Land, it'll have all the useful stuff for sailors, specifically for sta sailors rather than just tourists. Absolutely, yeah. So it's, uh, I suppose it's, it's a more glorified version of Google Maps, which is probably a bit unfair to Stephen Helene because they've clearly put a lot of effort into this. I think this is why it's worth a praise because mm -hmm. they have clearly gone away and thought, right, what mapping app is going to be best for cruisers who are moving around and looking to find information on you know new locations for example uh, where we are right now there are some moorings for people to take um, and of course you have to pay for these moorings but we're outside a little village how do you know who, mm. who to pay for the moorings well i've added an annotation on there uh, made sure it's recent, it's up to date. Mm -hmm. So uh, any entry you can update and it will send you, say when it's last edited. Uh, and obviously I've put in RD's telephone number. So anyone new coming in can look at No Foreign Land and say, oh, okay, here's some useful information. Right. And can anyone upload information? Yes. Or, yes, it's, it's open, open source. Uh, not Well, it's not necessarily open source, but no, it allows anyone, providing you have an account, of course, yeah. you have to have an account. Uh, but, um, you know, you can put your position in there as well, so the actual boat's position as well. Um, there's a lot of features on it that I haven't used, but uh, I, I was bored one day and just populated this whole area with all the knowledge that we've built up here, yeah. which I thought might be useful for other people. So And that information isn't anywhere else, is it? No. So I was thinking about the sort of crossover between No Foreign Land and Noon Sight. Um, Noonsight, I would say, is a website you go to when you're passage planning in advance. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm going to be going to Australia in three months' time. I'll probably arrive in Darwin. You would go to Noonsight 
when you're passage planning. Mm. No foreign land, I think for me anyway, uh, I would be using it on passage as I'm approaching somewhere, okay. approaching specific anchorages. Okay. So you can do both really, I suppose, with it. Is that yeah. right? Um, Rob Benfanati on Discord, he says that uh, with all the frequent updates and comments by users, he loves using it. Um, he says he still has books but he checks them less and less, and apps like No Foreign Land are definitely more interactive and easier to use. And I think that's the key with No Foreign Land is that they have really given a lot of thought to the, the, the GUI, the graphical mm. user interface. So um, definitely gets my vote. Okay, sounds like a really useful app, and it's worldwide. It's worldwide. Yeah, so you can become a member and you can start annotating, letting everyone else know what's good and where to go doesn't cost you anything yeah. uh, but they, they are supported by patreon as well okay great okay app number two one that we have talked about frequently and probably my most used app is alpine quest and uh it well there's a free version which is uh, all it's called all in one maps but alpine quest is basically a satellite imaging map that allows you to download satellite images uh, and you can cache it to your phone so that you can use it offline. Okay, okay, so some of the areas we, we go to, even now, are absolutely Wi-Fi free, we can't get any kind of... So we used it, when was the last time we really used it offline? Mantawis? No, no, more recently, we oh. around, all around Sulawesi. I mean, oh, I, yes, I, we're, we're caching yes. it all the time. I mean, even here, going across, say, the southern, you know, the southern part Sunders. of Lombok here, mm. Uh, we tend to sit down the night before, go through, do a rough passage plan and then zoom into the places that you want to visit and download both Google Maps and Bing Map uh, satellite data. The great thing about Alpine Quest is that you can alter the contrast and the colours and the saturation of your satellite layers and by whacking these up you can make them really bright and it's particularly useful for finding reefs yeah uncharted really reefs. amazing because when you look at something like navionics or any of these you know more, more well-known apps you have a figure in a bit of water which is a different color to the bit of water next to it but this is absolutely spot on you can even see bombies you can get mm. really close in can't you and obviously you you've got someone up the front conning anyway but this is so much more accurate than those other chart plotter apps i think yeah i mean i've lost count of the amount of times that we've come into anchorages and just use alpine quest as opposed to the chart plot i mean the chart plot obviously you know okay well supposedly it's approximately 10 meters but with this app you can zoom right in mm. and as you say you can see bombies mm. um, so the free version is all in one offline maps that doesn't allow you to record your track mm. or import and export various file formats. Alpine Quest, you pay only a few dollars for. You can export KML, KMZ, GPX uh, file formats and import them. So you could transpose what you're recording on your phone onto your main chart plotter. Um, and I've got tracks that show us sort of going in a straight line and then doing a handbrake U-turn as we can see quite clearly, you know, reefs that are mm. not, not charted. Mm, yeah, it's been really good. We've actually used it on the dinghy as well to get back to the boat at night across a bay that we know is strewn with, with reefs. And uh, my, I've, you've been driving, I've been holding the, the, the phone, just saying, right, bomb me in front, go right a bit, go left a bit. <laughs> and it's really worked, mm. hasn't it? Mm. I should, sorry, I should say, by the way, uh, I forgot to mention, No Foreign Land is available in both Apple and Android. Okay. Now, Alpine Quest is only available as Android. Mm. And when I've recommended this app, quite a few um, Apple owners have gone out and bought a cheap oh, Android right. phone just so that they can, they can run it. But is there nothing equivalent in Apple then? There may be, and if you've got any suggestions, please let us know in the comments. Uh, and of course, we're going to ask you all to give your recommendations generally for your favourite apps that you use. But uh, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Number three. Rain Viewer. Yep. One tell, of our favourite apps. Tell us about it. I love Rain Viewer because it tells you if it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, you could say, look out the window and you'd know if it was raining. But what it is, it's, um, it's worldwide, again, and it connects all the radar information for weather. Um, but specifically about clouds, rain, so forth. So you can, and it will, it will go back over how, however many hours you like, and you can see a build-up and you can see the direction in which the storms are coming. Are they coming at you? Are they likely to miss you? Is this rain you've got right now, is this just a little patch or is it a big thing? Uh, really useful at night when we've been woken up by maybe th a bit of thunder and lightning and a bit of le rain coming down and we're thinking, oh God, is this something big? Do we need to get up on deck? Quick look at Rainview will tell you just how bad it is. Yeah, now we should say that Windy, we'll talk a bit more about Windy in a moment, also has this feature and it is, as you say, that it's just using the base stations, the satellite base stations around the world. But I think with Rainviewer, the way that it's been applied, certainly with the widget, so, you know, I've got a widget on one of my home screens, so you literally turn on your phone and straight away the widget shows you a snapshot of the latest satellite information. I think it updates every 20 minutes. And it's showing the most important part of it, I think, is what's actually happened and what is happening right now. So it's factual. It's not a windy that's telling you what it thinks is going to happen. It does have a facility where it will predict the next two or three hours, but I usually find it's just taking what the last one is and just moving it along in a straight line. But it's knowing what's happened and what's happening right that moment that is the important thing that other apps don't do. And I think it's particularly relevant in the tropics when yeah. you are susceptible to squalls that can build up in the space of an hour which just don't get shown on weather forecast yeah. systems. Um, so it just, you know, it gives you, even if it only gives you half an hour's warning, you, you know to batten down the hatches because you can see quite clearly there's a fast-moving block yeah. of clouds coming at you. You've just got a really good idea about what's going on out there. You've already looked at Windy the last few days, so you roughly know the bigger picture, but this is immediate and extremely practical. Do you bring the washing in? Yeah. Nah, it'll blow over in a minute, you know, stuff <laughs> like that. Do you want to wash yourself in the rain on deck? Will there be enough? Or will you be stranded there all soaked up <laughs> with no way of getting rid of the rain? And also, you know, it's really good because you can fill up your um, water butts and your tank and so forth with nice rainwater. If you know it's going to be raining for the next few hours, brilliant. Really useful. It's a, it's, that's a good one, actually. Mm. You know, Should we leave the washing out? We're going to go ashore. <laughs> should we leave the washing out? Well, you can see, well, 200 miles away, there's clearly a system, but it... You know, just from looking at it enough, you know, well, that will blow out there, that might build up there. It's also just interesting looking to see in this particular situation we're in at the moment how clouds, cloud masses yeah. form, yeah. you know, that, that from the middle of the day onwards as the land mass heats up, you can see there are general patterns to the rain. And this is why we tend to get rain that comes in in the afternoon and the evenings. Um, but literally, we use that all the time don't we? We do and every single cruiser that we've met and told told them about this they've all now got it without fail cruisers love this app mm. so I suggest you really get it. Yep uh, again you can um, uh, you can pay for this or you can get a free version I think the paid version just gives you a longer historical period and it also gives yeah. you that two-hour forecasting as well. Yeah next one does so, it? The next one is, again, this is for you. Yes, I know. This is an app called On Course. And if you are a member of, uh, what's it called, Marine Traffic, which is all about AIS reporting and receiving, you can use this app. And it's really useful because wherever we go, I open up the app. We are members. Jamie is actually the member. We log in and say where we're going, how long we think it will take us to get there, whether we're sailing or whether we're motoring. We can also put in, once we've arrived, whether we're on a mooring or whether we're at anchor or in a marina or whatever. You can just put all, all this information in, the same information that you know marine traffic has. Um, and it picks up all the AIS um, markers around you. And so I press it to say, go, we're on our way, this is it, and we start broadcasting. And you usually get an email within a few minutes saying, oh, Esper's moving, this is where she's going. Is that right? Do you get that? Correct. Yeah. But I think, you know, the main point, my question to you is, well, yes. why are you using this if you've got AIS on board? And the answer is? I don't know. Why? <laughs> Well, because there are so few base stations oh, around. Yeah, sorry, yes, That's of why we're using yes, it. Yes. We're using this as a replacement for AIS. So at least we're broadcasting our position live. Yes. 
and especially again somewhere like this where we're tucked away the I don't know where the nearest base station is we're not even close enough to passing ships to pick mm. us up to repeat our position mm. um, so it's a very useful way of giving your real-time position Yes. If you want to, not everyone wants to do that. No, of they course. don't. I mean, obviously, we always have AIS on when we're travelling, but it quite often nobody knows where we are, apart from a few ferries if they could be bothered to look. But this is great though, because <laughs> I do like being able to see everything else really quickly and easily without having to muck the chart plotter around. This is just for AIS targets. Yes. Um, I noticed actually the other week. I realised that we were we had been on passage. <laughs> between Madonna in the north of Lombok to here in the south, a distance of 30 miles, for the last two months. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We just forgot to update it. I did update it, uh, but it was while we were sitting at a restaurant on shore, so it showed Esper being on shore having a drink. We should make that point, that mm. it is using your phone's GPS yes. to mark your position. Correct. So, it, it, yes, if you turn it on on land, your AIS target on marinetraffic.com is going to be on land. Yeah, so I, I hastily, as we got back to the boat, to, and she's moored at the moment, uh, put a little note saying we are moored here and waited for you to receive it. So hopefully marine traffic's up to date right now. Sorry for interrupting, but while I've got you here, if you like what we do and you want to support us and become a Patreon or join us on FTB Mates or even drop a quid in the rum fund, go to followtheboat.com forward slash pub. Of course, come to the pub. So we keep mentioning weather and of course we have to give a shout out to weather apps. Um, the two, of course, that I think most people are familiar with uh, for us anyway, is Windy and Predict Wind. And I think the way that I would distinguish between these two apps is that Windy for coastal cruising when you've got internet and then Predict Wind to connect by satellite uh, for your offshore weather forecasting. Yes, and Predict Wind will do all kinds of passage planning. It has lots of gizmos and things on it, but specifically for us as sailors. It's very, it's a very powerful app. I mean, they've got all kinds of uh, weather models, but I know that with Predict Wind, quite often they have uh, sort of human interrogated models as well, which is adding adding a diff additional information. Right. But yeah, absolutely, it's the, it's the passage planning in particular that is very, very um, powerful on mm. Predict Wind. Mm. Um, available, obviously, both for Apple and for Android. Mm. Mm. Whereas Windy, meanwhile, it's got so many layers and features now. I mean, it's great if you're a surfer. And in fact, I think... I, I think it started off. I was yeah. Gonna, yeah, it was a surfing app, wasn't yeah, it? it was. So you have a lot of sort of substations. So you've got your main weather station, but then you've got very localised um, weather stations. And yes, as a surfer, of course, it will give you the um, the size of the surf, the, the waves. It's really into all of that, yeah, which of course is useful for us too as sailors. Wa really uh, good. Wave direction, yeah. currents, uh, all that stuff. And um, yeah, when we are when we have internet connection and we're yeah. on the coast yeah. and we're just daily looking at weather, it's amazing. I look at windy almost every day. I've got to say, um, particularly at the moment, because those of us. Those of you who know us, if you've been, if you're on Discord, you'll know that we are currently in Asahan, on the southwest of Lombok, and we're waiting for the southeast trades to kick in. Uh, <laughs> they are almost looked as though they'd kicked in last week, which mm. is very early. But we were quite clever and we said, no, no, it's transition. They're going to swap round. And sure enough, the wind swapped round. And this is where wind is brilliant because you can see the whole big picture. We're really influenced a lot by Australia here. So when they get something off the coast, as they have right now, they've got a little depression, they've got a little low off the west coast. It sucks in all the, all the wind around the sunders here and changes the direction. So... That's what we're looking. We're looking at the big picture weather stuff as well as the local stuff. And at the moment, we're using it all the time to check for that change of seasons. Yeah, and it's not just the wind, it's the currents as yeah. well up the Java Sea. The, what we don't want to be doing is going up the Java Sea in adverse currents. So even if you've got a patch of wind taking you up in a northwesterly direction, if you've got currents coming down in a southeasterly direction, it's going to be very uncomfortable. That's what Windy is good for. It gives you those currents. 
And again, you can see it's the speed, the direction, and it, it's fascinating looking at the I currents, say, off the coast of Kalimantan, which is southern Borneo as we know it. The currents that come round headlands and out of rivers, and you get a real good, clear idea of um, basically whether you should be heading up in that direction or not. So that's for me, that's what I'm looking at more than the wind at the moment, is those currents. Yes, I love it. I think it's really great because you don't need to know a lot about wind or currents. It's really lovely to look at and it's very user-friendly. It's very easy if you're looking at the wind section one. With all the different colours, it's pretty obvious that dark red going to violet is very, very windy. Um, just pale blue isn't. And you've got all the little arrows telling you which way they're going. And for us, going back boringly to where we are at the moment, we're in the southern hemisphere, we're below the equator, so we're being, we're very much affected by the, the, by the trades. But once we go over the equator, which is what we're planning to do to get up to the Malaysia area, it's all different. Everything swaps round and the seasons swap round. So at the moment, we've still got big northeast coming in up there. So even if we were able to get through, once across the equator, we'd have the wind right against us. So, we, I mean, a lot of that current and wind coming down that Java Sea yeah. um, is affected by the, that northeasterly monsoon. And we can yeah. see quite clearly the northeast monsoon in the northern hemisphere is still in full effect. Yeah. This morning, I was looking at the Indian Ocean because their southwest monsoon, which is the famous monsoon and the wettest of them all, should be starting next month. And you can see that the very obvious um, easterlies that have been going on are now starting to break up. And the wind's sort of, all, all, I'm talking northern uh, Indian Ocean, it's all starting to look a bit different. It's right transitional area, as it mm. should be. It's doing what it should do. But that southwest there hasn't kicked in at all yet. Been anyway, <laughs> we could go on about that for ages. I, I think most people are familiar with windy. Yeah. There are, of course, hundreds of weather apps out there, and there was... One I have now forgotten the name of, we'll try and put it in the description, which is another really good uh, weather app, which uses the same data, but it actually breaks it down into text-based forecasts. Oh. Um, so if that is how you prefer to get your weather, mm. so it's more like watching a weather forecast on the BBC as mm. opposed to looking at graphics. Um, but we'd love to know, what, what is your favourite uh, weather wind prediction app and uh, why do you use that? OK. Meat so, and potatoes time. This is, <laughs> yes, we've got to get on to the boring one, haven't we? I mean, it's a bit unfair to call it boring, but this is perhaps why you have your phone for any nautical related app. It's going to be for navigation, of course. And... The one that everyone knows is Navionics, which I believe is available for both Apple and Android. And if you're Apple only, you have iSailor. iSailor's lovely. iSailor is a much better app, I think. We've got a, a tablet, an Apple tablet, so we can get iSailor as, as well. Mm. Um, and we do use both. Problem is that that tablet runs out of juice pretty quickly. <laughs> yes, it's a bit inefficient, but it, it's... It's, it's interesting, I think it depends where you are as to what data set they're using and how that's been interpreted. There have been situations where iSailor has been a lot more precise, precise than Navionics. Now, of course, Navionics is also using third-party data as well, so it's a bit unfair to blame either one of them for inaccuracies. But I think it's just the way that iSailor is laid out. It's a lot more intuitive the Navionics. And I should say, by the way, we have Navionics loaded on our chart plotter and we use it on the phone all the time. But it's such an antiquated interface. It hasn't changed in years. And I find putting waypoints in, do you know, I still cannot put easily put a waypoint in in Navionics. On the phone? On the phone. I just want to be able to just tap the screen, right. add waypoint. I know. I know. I, I don't like it at all. <laughs> full stop what else can I say uh, on the phone I mean I have it on the phone but as mentioned earlier I'll use Alpine Quest far more often than I'll look at that particular app the thing is though that most boats don't they come with Navionics these days What's the, there are others but everyone talks <coughs> about Navionics we've got Navionics it came with ours so that's what we're used to but a lot of people complain about it I think it's probably better 
in the well-travelled areas. I think it's very accurate in the well-travelled areas, but if you're coming over to this side of the world, which is Southeast Asia, and then within Southeast Asia, you're going to the less, tra you know, Thailand's probably fine. But when you start going into the weirder parts of Borneo and Malaysia, and then certainly as you come into Indonesia, it's much less covered and has mm. been completely inaccurate, hasn't it? Oh, it has. It's, it's been miles out before yeah. now. Um, I mean, the, the, the app developers themselves can't help that. That's just something that um, they have to contend with because they are using third-party data. But for me, an app is all about how easy and intuitive it is yeah. to use. And we mentioned no foreign land, predict winds, those kind of apps. They're just intuitive. They're pretty obvious. Navionics, I, seriously, I pull my hair out with it and I've had it out with the, the developers so many times this is the app that I had mentioned in the introduction that I had problems actually logging into. Mm, that's and what, right. Yeah. What was happening was the phone knew I had a phone signal, but I didn't have internet connection. Right. And the way that the app is developed is that you, you log in once for the first time. Once you've logged into your Navionics account, you can then use it freely. But what was happening was, for some reason, I was being logged out of it. I would then turn my phone on when I'm offshore and it wouldn't allow me to use the app because it couldn't log in because it didn't have internet connection. Mm. And I was getting to the point with the developers, I'd say to them, have any of you guys who've developed this app actually been off sailing offshore? Because I suspect 90% of Navionics users are probably coastal because mm. that's just how, you know, the sailing figures work out. Mm. But I was having problems with it using it offshore and we didn't have that problem with iSailor. No. So we... We tend to, when we're doing long journeys, you know, week or more, we'll use paper charts as well. So we'll have that. Mm -hmm. We'll have the paper chart out and every hour, because what else are you going to do? We plot where we are and you can see a nice course. You've got a rough idea where you are anyway with your paper chart. So if something like that were to happen, you've at least got that. But of course, it's, it's all right because the chart plotter is accurate. It's taken a GPS signal and it's got all the information there and it's showing you where you are. I mean, this is, this is why me complaining about Navionics in particular is a bit of a double-edged sword because it is the system that we have on the chart plotter and that is the thing that we are using all the time for general navigation. But the way that it is um, used on the chart plotter, it's, it's a completely different interface because yes. you're, that is dependent on how BNG have laid out all their buttons. Yeah. I'm talking specifically about apps on the phone, and okay. I just find Navionics really clunky to use. But the irony with all of this is that it is the app that we are using all the time for, for navigation. Yes. So is that the end of the whinge? No, it's never the end of the whinge. <laughs> There's always something to whinge about. I just, I think it's just, I think as a paid subscriber of Navionics, two subscriptions, by the way. Yeah, we one have one each. Well, one each for, for our phones and then a third subscription for the boat. For the boat. Mm. I think we have a right to complain about it. And I just think Navionics developers need to pull their finger out and have a look at some of these more modern apps to see how tapping a screen to put in a waypoint is just the obvious way to go. Mm. So mm. anyway. So for offshore, of course, I did mention it briefly, Starlink is, is the way forward, isn't it? Everyone's going to use Starlink, so you can get all your apps every time you like. You can be in the middle of the Indian Ocean, you can watch a Netflix movie. <laughs> Somebody said this to me the other day, that was the advantage of having it, and I said, shut up, I'm not going to watch a movie. I'm sailing, man, I'm looking at the stars. <laughs> Fishing, looking at the fish. I don't want to watch Netflix, but... Of course, with Starlink, you have got easy access to all the things like Windy and, and, and Navionics and all those things on your phone. You've got mm. it all there. If, so there is that. Yeah, but, you know, don't forget, of course, that Navionics and, uh, and other apps are designed to be used offline as well, yes, supposedly. Exactly. So uh, especially going back to Alpine Quest, because it caches all of that satellite data uh, when you're online, it, it means you have it to hand when you're offline as well. Is this when we now address the title of the video, which is, we don't need chart plotters anymore, we've got apps, something like that. Good point. Is it the time that we address it? And how do you feel about that statement? So I'm reminded of the time many years ago when a friend of ours was looking to revamp his navigation gear on his boat. And he had decided, I've told this story before, I'm sure, that the best way forward was to get a waterproof case for his iPad. Yep. 
I'd just used Navionics on the iPad, no need for integrated systems. And that evening I said, no, 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 no. An integrated system, a closed system, like what we have, uh, just makes more sense because it's marinized, it's designed for this particular environment. It, all these things talk to each other. Um, and the next morning we went off, hit a squall, and his iPad ran out of battery. It couldn't keep up with the charge, blah, 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 blah. And he went out and bought an integrated system. Yes, he did. But with hindsight, 10 years down the line, as our integrated system starts to fall apart and things stop working, and we are now faced with the prospect of having to replace gear at a cost of $1,000 for this, $2,000 for that, suddenly you realise, well, it's a lot cheaper just to have a phone, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we've got quite an interesting system because we've got two chart plotters, very good ones from B&G. We've got the big super one down below, which is fine, but we've got the one up in the cockpit, which is starting to show a bit of wear and tear. And we were thinking about, do we replace it? But I'm actually thinking that since we've got all the big stuff down below, I don't think we need a second one up here. This is my feeling. I'm quite happy to use the phone up here uh, because that's pretty much what we do most of the time. Well, don't forget, of course, when we first bought the boat, we yep. sailed for many years and travelled from Turkey all the way to uh, Thailand yep. with no chart plotter in the cockpit. Correct. And that was before we had mobile phones where we could use um, all of these apps that we talk about now. Yeah. See, and because of that, you, when you're on watch going across an ocean, every 15 minutes down below, just to check everything, uh, just check all the systems, that everything's working properly and that what you're seeing is what it's telling you on the chart and it kept you awake. Every 15 minutes mm. you had to keep going up and down, a bit of exercise, kept you awake, gave you 15 minutes to think about the next time you were going to do it and I found that really good and I am slightly bored and fed up with this, everything being done for you now, you know, just flick of a switch and off you go, you know, it's all, it's all there. Mm. I suppose that's convenient and I expect new people into the game love all that. But it's kind of taken away a little bit of the sailing, it's a bit like, you know, autopilot. Sometimes I actually want to sail the boat. Well, this is... <laughs> Rant over. The technology is there. It's up yes. to us as to how much we harness it, if at all. So, so and, and I think one of the problems, of course, is that when it goes down and you've got used to it, autopilot, yeah, bow exactly. thrusters, all of those kind of things which you can do without, but you feel like you've lost an arm when they go down, don't you? You do. And can you imagine being a new sailor and you don't have that experience? You've only ever had all of this technology. Mm. And if it were to go down, how... How prepared would you be to do it yourself? Do you know how to use a paper chart? Well, this is it. I mean, you know? we know how to use paper charts and tr to triangulate, but mm. I've never used a sextant. No, no, couldn't do so that. So how far back do you go with that argument? Yeah, I know. Who knows? So bottom line, do chart blossers still have a place? I'd say 100% they do. Mm. And I think that the backup in the cockpit, that's your phone. Yeah. yeah. With all these lovely apps. We actually agree on something. That's a breakthrough. <laughs> now, you mentioned Starlink and how you didn't want to be watching Netflix while you're crossing <laughs> an ocean because you want to be looking at the stars, which is a nice segue oh, yes. into honourable mentions. Yes. And one that we haven't got in our notes that I oh, suddenly yeah. remembered, of course, are stargazing apps. Mm. And how great stargazing apps are for identifying stars and uh, systems in the sky. And, of course, because, of course, they're all... Uh, not only are they GPS based, but they also have the, um, you know, the sensor which allows you to move the phone and you can lift the phone up and point it in the direction of the star system that you're looking at. Yes. And it tells you what it is. And it's a really good way of learning. Yes, it will show you if there's a, a solar or, or a lunar eclipse and so forth. In fact, I was reminded recently that I was doing a night sail with a full moon and couldn't understand why the moon seemed to be getting duller and duller and duller. And it suddenly became a crescent moon. And I thought, my God, is there, a, is there an eclipse going on? Is there, a, is there a lunar eclipse going on? And when we got back, looked at the app, and sure, we'd just, been, we'd just had a lunar eclipse, which apparently everybody else knew about, but because we were out at sea, we had no idea. And uh, it was fantastic to see it. But yeah, useful, very mm. useful. Do you like our coffee mugs? You can get your own from our shop. Find them at followtheboat.com forward slash shop. A few other worthy mentions, apps that we find useful. Well, I'm going to go back to you. You've put down Nortide. Yeah, Nortide is an app that uh, was introduced to me by a uh, friend in Sabah, a local man. He's a fisherman. And uh, we were discussing 
how he manages always to get big fish. <laughs> and I, I wasn't, I was occasionally, but I wanted to understand what it was. And he said, you need this app. It's called Nautide, N-A-U-T-I-D-E. It's worldwide. You put in your location and it will tell you in a very simple way, if there are no fish, it means there are no fish, don't fish at that time. And then it has one fish, two fish, three fish, which tells you the likelihood are in that local area of finding fish. It has a lot more stuff as well. It's got tides and all this kind of thing. But it's really, really designed for fishermen and it's been pretty accurate. Mm. So if you're going on a passage and you're thinking, oh, I'll just stick the line out any old time, um, try and get your skipper to agree to leave at a certain time going across a certain area because you know that that's going to be the best time to catch the fish. So rather than talking to the locals, which is another thing you should do, obviously, but if you haven't got the opportunity to do that and get local knowledge, use Nautide. It's good. Mm. There we go. Uh, another one we should mention is Active Captain Garmin's. It's now owned by Garmin, Active Captain. Now, this is something that I have never used oh. and I hear frequently referenced... It is perhaps the equivalent of something like No Foreign Land, but maybe with more of an emphasis on the navigational side of things. I don't know. I would love to know from people watching this if they use Active Captain. I'd love to hear from you because it, it is a very big community. I think it probably came from originally commercial skippers. Yeah. Um, but is now filtered down to uh, the commercial, uh, sorry, the, the you know, pleasure side of. Yeah, I'd be really interested to hear someone in the comments tell us if they mm. use it and if it's any good. Yep. Uh, just a random one here. Oh, well, since we're talking about boats, of course, we should mention the Victron app. And uh, this was mentioned by a number of people on Discord, which I'd, I'd just completely forgotten about. But if you have a Victron uh, power system, you have an app which allows you to connect by Bluetooth make sure you change your password on your system because otherwise in a marina you see all these Victron <laughs> systems and you can go into other people's systems. Oh. Um, and it just allows you to monitor your power levels. If you have Victron MPPTs, you can monitor individual MPPTs as well. Uh, now you may be thinking, well, if I've got a display five foot away in the chart area, why do I need it on the phone? Well, a very good application I found was when I was at the helm, and I was going under engine, I was curious to see how much charge the alternator, for example, was putting out as I accelerated on the throttle. So at the helm, I could monitor and see, OK, we're increasing 10 amps here, or maybe how much the solar panel is or isn't putting in as it clouds over. So um, it breaks it down into uh, text-based um, results but also it has various graphs as well so okay so you can also use it mid-ocean and you can turn off the film you're watching on next next <laughs> Netflix and check your batteries without moving out of the cockpit in fact you can still be lying down in the cockpit yep <laughs> yep very useful app um, that, that one's free by the way yeah don't have to pay for that um, now, I just wanted to throw this one in here uh, because I was talking to someone this morning about it. We don't use an anchor drag alarm. And the reason for that is because there's two of us on board. If the weather picks up, especially at night time, one of us will almost always be up. And if the weather comes in, invariably one of us will be on anchor watch while the other one sleeps. That's why we don't use an anchor alarm. The other reason, of course, is that we're pretty confident with our anchor and our anchoring technique. However, I was talking to Ray this morning, who's a solo sailor, and he uses a particular app. There's a free version and a paid version, and it's called Anchor Light. Um, I don't know if that's L-I-T-E, Anchor Light. Uh, and he says it's a great app, and I figured, well, I might as well download it if there's a free version and just give it a go. But he raves about this, and especially as a solo sailor. Yeah, it'll uh, wake him up. Yes. Sometimes you sleep. Yeah, and obviously you can set your proximity. Yeah. Uh, um, so I, I haven't looked into that, but if you use an anchor drag app, then let us know in the comments which yeah. one you prefer using. Do you use them on moorings as well? Because uh, over here, occasionally, moorings are known to drag. One drag right through this field of moorings. Do you know, it's funny you <laughs> should mention that. Do you know where that mooring is right now? Underneath the boat. It's right underneath us. <laughs> So yeah, so um, that's a whole other topic. 
taking moorings or anchoring. Unusually, we are mooring at the moment, but it's been okay, touch wood. Um, I saw another YouTube channel that had the ability on land to use an app which showed whether their boat was moving. Mm -hmm. uh, what's that? Okay, so all the, that need that requires an internet connection on your boat right. away from your phone because obviously when you go ashore, the boat for us would lose our connection because we hotspot. Yes. So you would have um, some kind of router or a, a another phone which stays on board and that's producing an internet connection. Okay, okay, that is then broadcasting your connection to a central server or whatever app it is that you happen to use. We've just, I've never really integrated it because it just needs a, a third internet connection. Okay. Um, I've never really played with that, but uh, it's a very useful way of monitoring your boat when you are out of sight from your boat. Yes, it's out of sight, isn't it? I mean, one of the funny things, <laughs> if you're not a cruiser, is that you'll all be in the bar, day or night, having a lovely time, Suddenly, the wind will really kick up, mm. and you'll, it's the only time you'll ever see a sailor put their half drink down and rush to their <laughs> dinghy to get out to their boat. So I would say that the alarm is the wind, because we all know you need to be on your boat when, it's, when, the, when the wind's kicked up. I wouldn't be on shore if there was 20 knots out there. I'd be on the boat. So um, that's another alarm. OK, just two more Kay. recommendations. One more sort of vaguely... Uh, uh, related to, to, to cruising is, uh, and this was, again, Rob Benfinati said, any app about lightning mm -hmm. so I could put my computers, devices and camera into my Faraday cage. Um, <laughs> now, you use an earthquake app, don't you? I use an earthquake cap, cap Call, app called, because uh, you know it's, it's called, called Earthquake. Right. It's called Earthquake. It's very, very simple. It tells you, you can, you can hone it down to, you know, the... the the minimum size you're, you're prepared to be informed about and the area. So you choose your area, you choose your size, size so you say nothing below three, uh, but I'd like to know what's going on. Because we are in a very dangerous mm. area when it comes to volcanoes and earthquakes, we've felt them since we've been here and you do get tsunamis here and they're quite frequent. So I just thought having the app would be quite useful and it is, it's amazing. Ray, another one, he has an app, a similar app, and we often talk in the mornings about what's going on around us. And there was a whole load of stuff going on north of Java and the islands around there. They were reaching six and seven um, on, on the scale. You're talking and about the Richter scale, The right? Richter scale, yes, yeah, sorry, yes. the Richter scale. And some of them were quite light, and so there were tsunami warnings. Um, it just and gives you an idea of what's going on. You can watch it build up. And also, this app does seem to be giving you notifications before you get them anywhere else. Yep. I mean, the newspapers and so forth, they'll suddenly do a little, oh, there was something here, but I've known about it for ages. It's very quick, it's very immediate. I think it's, the information is sourced from a number of places around the world. It's, it's worldwide. Really simple, and it's free. Hmm. The other one that Rob mentioned is called Ornicus. Oh, yes. This is fact. I didn't know yes. this. I think, um, I hope I spelt that right. Ornicus, I think it is, which is an orca watch because uh, we all know orcas are now out for out for yachts they're all tr they're trying to eat us <laughs> yep attacking boats uh, oh yeah big stuff so this is obviously um on the western seaboard of france and around the um bay of biscay, biscay. and uh, we're also coming right round coming into spain round to, yep gibraltar you've um, probably read about this or heard about it so, yeah nobody so, knows why they're doing it but like every, up with us. every other animal on this planet, they're probably fed up with us humans, aren't they? <laughs> I don't know about any app that tells you about lightning. Uh, well, um, on Windy it shows you storms that has little lightning icons. That's but predicting yes. it. Yeah, I, 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 Rain like, viewer doesn't, does it? Yeah, I don't know. No. Just look out the window. And finally an app that I just wanted to give a little nod to because we do use it all the time and although it's not specific to being on the boat, it is Google Translate, mm. and I have lost count of the amount of times I have depended on Google Translate. Mm. When you come into a new place, again, this is a perfect example. Fortunately, the guy in charge of the moorings here speaks very good English, but there are so many occasions when you get somewhere and you need important information from a local, 
and you just use Google Translate. Use it all the time. It's fantastic. It's enabled us to have conversations with people that we probably never would have been able to before. Mm. And they're, you know, so I'll write it in English, then they'll reply in Bahasa or whatever language it is. I mean, even officials, you know, so in some places where you need to talk to officials, they don't always speak English. You mm. can't expect them to. So absolute essential for anyone who's going cru cruising outside their own area. Okay. So few. We've avoided the obvious one. We've avoided Netflix, Facebook, <laughs> WhatsApp, all of those. Of course, you know, we all we all use those. And especially for cruisers who are away from home, these kind of apps are a great way of staying in touch with people. But we just wanted to highlight some sort of cruising boaty specific ones. Of course, if you have any suggestions, and I'm sure there are people bashing their keyboard saying, but you forgot to mention this app, that app, let us know. We love to be corrected, don't we? We do. Well, I have to correct you a lot, so you're used to it. I'm always wrong. <laughs> Bottom line, though, on the old chart plotter is keep your chart plotter and maybe use apps in addition to the chart plotter, I'd say. Uh, yes, I, 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 I would agree with that. But, you know, if you're on a budget and you can't afford a chart plotter, isn't it great that we now have these apps which only cost a few dollars or are free? Yes. At our fingertips. Yeah. Technology, ain't it great? It'll all have changed in a year. Mm.